Greetings, metaphysicians. This is episode 135, The Truth Crisis. And yeah, we're in a truth crisis right now. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about what we can do about it. And the main question centered in this episode is, do you care about the truth more than you care about being right? What's the answer for you? Tune in and enjoy the episode. You are listening to Let's Get Metaphysical. This podcast explores the spiritual and metaphysical world through the experiences and opinions of the host and those interviewed. It should not necessarily be seen as direct endorsement or personal advice to our listeners. We encourage you to use your own discernment, judgment, and intuition regarding anything you learn from this show. Let's get metaphysical. Welcome to the Let's Get Metaphysical podcast. I am your host, Renata Maniachi, here to remind you that you are a spiritual being having a temporary human experience here on lovely planet Earth. That's right, you are a soul who has likely incarnated millions of times um this planet or other planets or in other forms and types of existences and this is not your only lifetime so make the most of it this is season seven heaven on earth and this is episode 135 the truth crisis and i just want to jump right into this episode without talking much about it beforehand so Let's go right into it. Are you ready? Let's get meta. Masters and angels, I request your presence, guidance, and support through this episode. Please help these words to be useful to all listeners on their evolutionary journey. Please let all of us know the truth. Speak the truth. Become the truth. And be the truth. And please let this episode reach whoever needs to hear it. Thank you with gratitude and full faith. Bless creation. And as you can see from that prayer that I do in every episode, and I've been saying that part about knowing the truth and speaking the truth, etc. For a while now, truth is really a big part of, I don't know, I guess what I care about. And this podcast started... I guess because I was beginning to slowly realize there there was a lot more to this world than just what we see on this level. And I kind of went into that in the last episode, the unseen world. It's just there's so much out there that's influencing us that we don't necessarily know about. But that's why I started this podcast is because I was interested in what else, what other truths are out there that we just aren't used to, or we just don't know about. But at its essence, it is about truth. It's like, I was having these experiences starting around, you know, over 10 years ago, I guess now, when I started down this more, I don't know, spiritual path, or at least interested in spirituality, metaphysics, that there's this, these whole other things, these whole other worlds and arenas and areas that were out there that were there, that did exist, and on many levels are true, that just have not really been incorporated into, you know, day-to-day life and day-to-day culture, at least in this culture in the West. And I just wanted to talk about it and hear more about it and learn more about it and That's why so many of my first episodes were interviewing people that were people who had jobs or professions in those realms that kind of go hand in hand with the more unseen worlds, whether it was psychics or astrology or different kinds of energy work and meditation, all of these things that aren't just aren't as tangible as you know, working a nine to five in an office and looking at a computer screen. I mean, that's very tangible. And a lot of this other stuff isn't. 
But for me, the core of, I guess, what I'm seeking and what I like to talk about is getting to the truth, getting to whatever the truth is. Because there is a truth. It's not just you have one truth and I have one truth and this other person has another truth and that dog has a truth. There may be, you know, realities that we each have for ourselves and perceptions that we each have for ourselves, but ostensibly there is a truth. There is an overarching truth. And without really being aware of it, I include that part in my prayer about knowing the truth, speaking the truth, becoming the truth, and being the truth, because that is what I want to do. That's what I'm striving to do. And I wish the world would too, (laughs) I guess. And, you know, I'm doing my very small part to encourage and encourage the truth, I guess, and inspire maybe on some levels other people to also seek the truth and spread the truth, whatever that is, in whatever arena that is. Now, the arena that I've chosen to do this and to play in is metaphysics and spirituality. And there are so many things that are true that I have no idea about and that I probably will never know about while I'm in this body because truths that are overarching and real might be above my pay grade at this level of consciousness. There are levels of consciousness that are higher than human consciousness, right? And we're not allowed to see everything at this level. But the things that we are able to uncover and are able to be privy to and are able to be aware of, I want to know. I want to find out what that is. And so that brings me to this episode's topic, and I'm calling it the truth crisis, which we seem to be just seeped in right now on the planet. We are seeing an existential truth crisis that is affecting this entire world in untold areas, in every area, in unfathomable ways, because there are those who are speaking, sharing, telling, purporting, and spouting just outright lies on every topic around the world right now. And unfortunately, those people also seem to be the people that have power and money and control and who own things like the press and media sources and Hollywood. And so when you're someone who isn't aligned in truth and wants to control people, and has the resources to do it, what would you do? Well, you would make sure that everything that people see, whether it's news, newspapers, TV shows, movies, even musicals, education, what people learn in school, you would make sure that you controlled that and that People learned and saw and read whatever you wanted them to. I never thought, you know, I read 1984, the book 1984, when I was, I think I was around 21 or 20. And I remember reading that and being like, this is nuts. Like, that'll never, that could never happen. And and thinking like how crazy that somebody somebody could think that i can't remember the exact example in the book but it's something like 2 plus 2 equals 5 right and if you get told that enough 2 plus 2 equals 5 then basic truth of math gets superseded 
and replaced by this fake, this false thing, which is two plus two equals five. And what I guess what the irony is, is that was already happening and I was already, I was already <laughs> taken in by that time that I read that book that I didn't realize that that was already happening. And now I do. And wow, I just stepped outside of myself for a minute and I totally sound like a conspiracy theorist, which in essence was a term created by the FBI to make people that are questioning the true nature of their reality sound crazy, right? So even that term conspiracy theorist was made by people who are trying to control the reality that people are seeing. Um, anyways, whatever, you get lost, you get lost in what is and what isn't true. And now we have people, and we have had people for decades and longer than that, really doing their work and trying to really see what is the truth of any situation. And from what I can see, not being an expert, I have never claimed to be an expert in anything, but from what I can see from my vantage point is it is getting in some ways harder to find what the truth is. And in some ways easier because of uh, citizen journalism, everybody has a phone, everyone can go live on their phone if they have the right application whatever, so people can see things with their own eyes. But then you bring in things like the huge propaganda machine that's run by certain people in the world, and then the huge amount of AI that's coming in right now and CGI and things that can make whatever look real, and then just who's making the choices of what we're seeing and what we're reading and what we're learning. There's two sides. And you know, I don't, I want to stop for a minute and say, I believe that everything that's happening right now, ultimately on the biggest, highest macrocosm level on the divine level is correct. It is accurate. It's supposed to be happening. Even all the craziness, even all the chaos, any violence, any bio warfare, any manufactured, meaning human made agents to make us sick, all of this stuff on some level, it's happening and it's being allowed to happen by the divine. So, you know, big picture, guys, I'm still an optimist. I'm still seeing that we're going in the right direction. You know, all of that remains true. But this truth crisis is everywhere. And it's getting to a point where people can be told one thing and have mountains of proof, evidence, scientific papers backing it and the opposite of that thing also has what looks like mountains of proof and evidence and scientific papers backing it if it's such a thing that needs scientific papers to back it so you can have two completely opposing ideas and the evidence to support those two completely opposing things is there and can be found or fabricated and oftentimes it is fabricated on either side, on any side of any issue. And so I find myself in this place of just observing the world and seeing and, and feeling, what is the feeling? I guess that I feel that I have a very strong sense of what is true and what isn't. I have tools to be able to distinguish what is true and what isn't that I feel are very true and accurate, but I don't feel that the majority of the world has those tools, maybe. And so I feel looking at and observing what's going on in the world, I feel sad for those who honestly, with a pure heart, are trying to figure out what the heck is going on on this planet and everywhere they turn, it's like, who do I trust? What do I trust? You know, we're having, we're in a time where the truth is an incredibly difficult thing to discern. And I've talked about truth before. I've talked about discernment before on this podcast. I, when I talk about those things, I often, you know, emphasize staying clear be as clear and as healthy as you can, which enables you to discern truth better and then tune into yourself, tune into your gut, 
sink below all of the programming, the conditioning, the propaganda, the, th the things that somebody, anyone who has an agenda is telling you or has taught you, sink to the deepest core of yourself beneath all of that and then ask, is this thing true? And feel it, feel to see if it is, if it isn't, feel what your gut says, feel what your soul says, those kinds of basic, but that's hard to do, right? We are conditioned since the moment we are born and, and now more than ever. I mean, if I was conditioned when I was born in the eighties, oh my gosh, like young beings being incarnated right now. I, I mean, you're born with a screen in your hand practically. And so whatever you're watching is immediately conditioning you. I don't care what it is. It could be baby Einstein that you're listening to from the womb, but that is a vibration, right? I'm not saying anything's wrong with baby Einstein, but, or what am I thinking? Baby Mozart, whatever, you know, but all of it is you're, you're con being conditioned and you can be conditioned to the positive. You can be conditioned to truth, but who is? Like, is anybody? And what would that be? Like, what does that mean? Is public school conditioning us for the, to the truth, the true history, the true, you know, is anything but math, <laughs> like, able to be, you know, undeniably unbiased? And even, <laughs> there's even, you know, issues with math. And I, yeah, I won't get into that. I guess what I'm getting at is we are, we're in a truth crisis. And we're also, and that spreads to everything else. We're in an education crisis. We're in a science crisis. You know, we have half of the world that is saying that masks are completely ineffective and that the shots that a lot of people were made to think they had to take saved lives. So, and then the opposite of those things are true, you know? Well, and you'll have mountains and heaps of evidence saying, yes, masks are effective, and yes, these shots saved lives. And then you'll have just as many people saying, no, here's the evidence, here's the science. These are these masks are ineffective, and these shots actually took lives, right? So how do you figure out what the truth is? We are, on a grand scale, at least on the macro, being de deliberately fooled. The truth is being deliberately diluted. And I guess what's one of the things that is so nice about your family, your community, the smaller scale we get, the less I think this happens, the less, hopefully, right, the less manipulation happens in your interpersonal relationships, your, your you know, small town businesses that you interact with all the time, your workplace. But I feel like the more that we listen to sources that are big sources, overarching sources, you live in a city, you get bombarded with propaganda, just with the posters and stuff that are up around your city, the billboards, the radio, the news, the everything, it becomes a playground for those with more power and resources to try to control your thinking and get you to support their agenda without really truly even knowing what that agenda is. And so for me, one of the biggest questions that everyone on the planet should be asking themselves right now is, do you care about the truth more than you care about being right? Do you care about the truth more than you care about being right? I think for most people, they would say, yes, I do care about the truth more than I care about being right. But I think that some that people are so conditioned that they do believe that what they are thinking and being told is the truth. Like I did, like when I read 1984 and thought this could never happen. Nobody could ever think that two plus two equals five. That's happening on so many different levels right now in so many different arenas and so many different 
organizations and let me give you an example of caring about the truth more than caring about being right. My first two episodes, which I use, have used as examples before, are about the now infamous John of God. I did those episodes innocently. I thought that he was a good person. Thousands of people had been to him, read a lot of testimonials that said they, they were healed by him, blah, 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 went down there, stayed there for a couple of weeks, interviewed people. Those interviews that the, the three women that I interviewed, I am sure that they were telling their honest perceptions of what they thought this person was, who they thought this person was. I think that they were telling the truth. I don't think they were lying to me. Then, as we all know, several months later, it comes out that this man is being accused of having abused sexually thousands of women and worse Like, I mean, so many worse things too. I won't even go into it. But that turns out that that abuse part was true. And so instead of just keeping that on there or deleting those episodes and pretending that I'd never done them, which I could do, I am owning that I had that perspective, that I did those things and then I, you know, put a little thing in the beginning of those two episodes saying this person has now been accused and is awaiting trial or in prison for having abused, you know, X amount of women over the last several decades. Because that's the truth. When I did those episodes and got that information from those people, all of us thought that that was the truth. And on one level of consciousness, that was a truth. He worked with thousands of people. Some people thought that they were healed by him, blah, blah, blah. That was one level of consciousness truth. Now, consciousness grew and expanded. And then another truth became came to light. The truth that this person was also abusing women and probably children. And, you know, I'm not going to go into it, but it's not a, it's not a pretty thing. It's a very, very dark thing that I couldn't see at that time. But as consciousness expanded, there was a greater truth than the original truth that I saw and believed, right? That's just one example. And I care more about the truth than I care about being right. At least I try to. I strive to. I'm not saying I'm perfect because I'm totally not. Oh my gosh, so long to go. But can we care about the truth in any situation more than we care about being right? And just as a side note, I mean, I'm recording this when this Israel-Palestine conflict is all that the news is talking about. And it's like, okay, Ukraine is done. Now let's talk about Israel and Palestine. And before Ukraine, it was, okay, there's COVID. Let's talk about only that. And I'm not trying to make light of these very real things. And I, I, I do not support anybody suffering at all. And on that note, why isn't anyone talking about peace? It's the, the programming right now and the conditioning is choose a side. Let's start World War III. Choose a side. And to be clear, I'm not saying let's start World War III. I want peace. Why isn't anyone talking about peace? That's, that doesn't, peace doesn't help the people who want to make money off of these wars. Peace doesn't help when people want to take over more control of our everyday lives and control us even more than they do now. Peace isn't profitable. Unity isn't profitable. Division is profitable for these people. So think about that. Let that sink in. What is true? Why are we being told what we're being told? And I guess what I want to really impress upon anyone listening is that The truth does exist. And I think in this climate of having this truth crisis, the forces that are against the truth are counting on you to be so confused and so diluted with untruth and fabrications and conditioning and all the things, propaganda, let's take out this thing that we were focusing on the last year and here's the next program, let's do that. They're so hopeful that you are 
just in chaos and you cannot discern the truth for yourself. But that doesn't mean that the truth does not exist. It does. There is a truth. And it's not just your truth for your personal life and your perspective. It's the truth. There are truths that encapsulate truths, kind of like I just said with that analogy. There was this, we did this episode, that was true to all those people, and then consciousness expanded, a new truth came to light, and that umbrella the other one that superseded the other truths and you know what maybe there's going to be some time when more things come out about the infamous john of god and that will encapsulate an even greater truth and i'm open to that because i just want to know the truth but if somebody shows me a utensil right and it has prongs on it and you use it to pick up food that is a fork a fork is a fork. If somebody shows me that, I'm going to say it's a fork. I'm not going to say it's a spoon because it's not a spoon. And somebody, no matter who, is not going to convince me that that's a spoon when it's a fork. There is truth. That is truth. Somebody made an apple pie. It's made with apples. There's apples in it. It's an apple pie. Somebody is not going to come and convince me that that's a cherry pie. There's no cherries in it. That's not a cherry pie. It's an apple pie. There is truth. The truth does exist. Let's find it. Okay? There are people that are trustworthy, that are trying to get the truth out. What they know of the truth. Now, can you get into trouble with this? Sure. There are well-meaning people who are trying to share the truth of a situation that sometimes get it wrong. And they don't mean to. They're not actually trying to delude you like other people are and other news sources are because it's difficult to discern what truth is. But you will know these people because when they figure out that they have printed something or said something that's wrong, they will correct it. And that's how, on one level, you can tell that you can keep looking to them to understand what's going on. And mostly, these aren't wealthy people. These aren't people that own Fortune 500 companies. These aren't people who are going to gain a lot by people taking a certain shot. These aren't people who are going to gain control by you staying in your homes and not going to school. These are not the people that are telling the truth. These other people are honest, humble, probably don't have a huge network of people probably don't necessarily count on your money to survive, what can you do? Stay clear, stay healthy, ask for help. This is the same advice I gave in the previous episode, The Unseen World, but seems to be pretty good advice. Stay clear, stay healthy, get enough sleep, talk to the divine. Some people call that praying, but talk to the divine, ask for help, tune into yourself. And disconnect from anything that is telling you how to think. Anything that's telling you how to think or whose side to be on or what freaking picture to put up next to your profile pic, what colors, what flags, what whatever. Anything that says that, it's just, it's so, I mean, hopefully this is obvious by now. I guess that's where I'm also going is like, hopefully it's so obvious that we're trying to be led. So disconnect from anyone trying, anything that's trying to tell you what you should be believing and look for the truth yourself. Go within, ask for help from the divine, ask for increased discernment. Masters and angels, I request that everyone listening here, you maximize the strength of their discernment of truth now. Thank you with gratitude and full faith. Actually, you know what? That's bonus content. We're going to go in, I'm going to do a clearing to clear anything out so that we can discern truth more. You know, I think we've done this before. We're going to do it again. Never hurts. If you want to be part of that clearing, go to patreon.com slash let's get meta and you can access that and any other bonus content that I've ever done, but you don't have to. You can make prayer requests yourself from your higher guides, your angels, so that you can discern truth for yourself. Okay? So do that. That's what's most important. Care about the truth more than you care about being right. We all need to do that right now. 
and the truth will prevail. I'm going to leave it there for today. Thank you so much for listening. Stay positive, stay safe, and stay meta. The Let's Get Metaphysical podcast is an Up, Up, and Awaken production and is produced and hosted by Renata Maniachi. Our intention is to raise the vibration of the planet by sharing, validating, and normalizing spiritual and metaphysical experiences. If you are ready to raise your vibration, you might enjoy our free Let's Get Meta Master Clearing. To receive the Master Clearing or to learn more about the podcast, visit letsgetmeta.com. The Let's Get Meta podcast is inspired by angels and supported by angels. If you would like to be a patron angel to the podcast, visit patreon.com slash letsgetmeta. Thank you for listening. Stay meta. Let's get meta. Metaphysical. Let's get meta. Metaphysical. Let's get meta. Metaphysical. Let's get meta. Metaphysical.